Hey guys, so we're on to the fourth story in Mouse Soup by Arnold Lobel, right? And so the mouse said he was going to read, or he was going to tell four stories to the weasel to make the soup taste better. Yeah, so this is the last story. So if the mouse is going to escape, he's got to do it pretty soon, right? So, let's start reading. So the last story is The Thorn Bush. An old lady went to the door of her house. She was crying. A policeman came running. Dear lady, said the policeman, why are you crying? Come in, said the old lady, and I will show you. There is an old lady mouse, and she's crying, and there is a policeman mouse coming to help her. That's a nice policeman mouse. Look, there is a thorn bush growing in my living room chair, said the old lady. That is a weird place for a thorn bush. That would make me upset, too, if a thorn bush were in my comfy chair. How did it get there? asked the policeman. I do not know, said the old lady. One day I sat down and something hurt me. I got up. There was the thorn bush. So there they are looking at the bush in her chair. That's not a good place for a bush. And so she's telling the story about how she discovered it was there, how one day she just sat down and something poked her. That would not be very fun if you just sat down on a thorn bush and didn't know it was there. You poor lady, said the policeman. I will pull the thorn bush out of your chair. Then you can sit down again. No, cried the old lady. Don't do that again. I do not want to sit down. I have been sitting down all my life. I love my thorn bush. I am crying because it is sick. Hmm, that's weird. I wasn't thinking about that. Yep. So she loves her thorn bush and she's sad because it's sick. Not because it poked her. I thought the same thing as the policeman. Maybe she could have made that more clear in the beginning whenever she said, help, my thorn bush needs help. Alright, so see, said the old lady, all the branches are falling over. Alright, so you see, all the branches are droopy in the bush. And usually whenever all the branches are droopy in a flower or a bush, that means that it's not very healthy. <clears throat> the thorn bush may be thirsty, said the policeman. Perhaps it needs water. I never thought of that, said the old lady. She poured some water on the chair. I guys remember we talked about that, how plants need water to grow? So she dumps a whole bunch of water on the plant. That's probably not very good for her chair. All right, the thorn bush shivered and shook. Green leaves came out on the branches. Little buds came out near the leaves. So it shook, it shakes. And then green leaves came out of the branches. And then... Little buds came out near the leaves. Right? So buds are like little bitty tiny parts of a plant. Like these little orange bits, they're buds. Right? Like people talk about flower buds. So other plants have those too. There we go. The buds open and they became large roses. Right? Look how pretty that is. So the buds are like little bitty, oh, uh, well, like flowers. And then they open up into roses. Thank you, kind policeman, cried the old lady. You have saved my thorn bush. You have made my house beautiful. She kissed the policeman and gave him a big bunch of roses to take home. Well, that was nice of her. All right. Now is the last story. So there, said the mouse. I have told you my stories. They will make your mouse soup taste really good. All right, said the weasel. But how can I put the stories into the soup? That will be easy, said the mouse. Run outside and find a nest of bees, some mud, two large stones, ten crickets, and a thorn bush. Come back and put them all in that soup. I'm not sure if your soup would taste better if you put mud and crickets and stones and a thorn bush in them. Oh yeah, or crickets. Some people do eat crickets, but I'm not sure if I would want crickets in my soup, personally. So there you go, so he's scratching his head trying to figure out how to put all of the stories in the soup with the mouse. See, look, and the mouse, he's smiling just a little bit. And the weasel looks grumpy, so maybe the mouse has a plan to escape. The weasel ran outside very fast. He forgot to close the door. Huh. And that mouse is still smiling. He's coming out of the bowl just a little bit. The weasel found a nest of bees. He was stung many times. That's why you don't mess with the nest of bees. See, there's the weasel. All his nose all stung. And look, there's the mouse. Wonder what he's got in his hand. 
Oh, it's his book. Okay. You see, there's the mouse hole in his little book. See, the mouse followed the weasel out. If I got into the skate being, then I probably would not have followed the person who was trying to eat me, but I'm not a mouse. So. The weasel found some mud. It was wet and gooey. The weasel found two large stones. They were heavy. I don't know if that's really the best way to pick up mud, but I guess that's what he did. Then he picked up two heavy stones, and the mouse is still following him, right? See, the mouse is right there, and the mouse is right there. The weasel found ten crickets. He had to jump to catch them. See, look. Then he's hopping, trying to catch the crickets. And the mouse is back there, still spying on him. The weasel found a thorn bush. He was pricked and scratched. This weasel's going through a lot of effort for this soup. There's the mouse just hanging out watching him. Now my mouse soup will taste really good, said the weasel. But when the weasel came back, he found a surprise. The cooking pot was empty. Ah, so the mouse did tell him all those stories to escape, huh? He's a pretty clever mouse. There he is. And look, he's not in this picture anywhere. Just a very upset looking weasel. And the mouse hurried to his safe home, right? So he lives in a tree too. And so that's part of the personification, right? We know that mice don't really live in homes like ours, right? They don't have little doors like ours. So this author wrote it so that the mouse was kind of sort of like a human, but we know that mice aren't really live in houses like this. He lit the fire and he ate his supper. And he finished reading his book. And so that's the story of Mouse Book, and so that's a chapter book. I know a couple of you haven't read chapter books very much, so I hope that you enjoyed it. Bye!